practical operations, missions in which air power is committed to the assistance of ground forces are a vital part of the Air Force's job. These operations are the responsibility of tactical air. The basic operations of tactical air in support of ground forces include four types of missions. Air superiority, reconnaissance, interdiction, and close air support. It will be interesting to compare tactical air operations today with the way they used to be done not so long ago. Let's call on someone who's been around a while to tell us how it was. Sir, Colonel, would you help us? I'll try. What's your problem? We'd like to find out about tactical air operations in the past, in World War II and Korea, for instance. Well, I was there, in both and tactical air employed the highest performance aircraft ever designed and built up to that time. Whatever types were best suited to the particular job. We understand. Would you give us a few examples? Sure. To begin with, our ground forces had many a tough assignment and they depended on us to protect them from aerial attack. Keeping enemy air power off their backs was an important aspect of our air superiority mission. One part of the job used fighter interceptor aircraft. Remember these hot ones? Their assignment was to take care of the stuff that was coming at us from the air. And of course, we had to have bombers to keep the enemy on the ground and in no condition to fly. Reconnaissance came next. We used special types of planes to find out about enemy terrain, fortifications, supply lines, and troop movements. After reconnaissance came interdiction. That took in the whole idea of preventing the enemy from moving his troops, his supplies, or anything else. We kept our fighters busy hunting down mobile units such as ammunition carriers. And we sent our bombers to clobber the enemy's railroad terminals communication centers, supply depots, highways, and bridges. Close air support was our other mission. And that wasn't a simple job either. An important phase of the work was the column cover assignment. We'd sometimes have to go in low. If you try this with anything that doesn't have the speed and firepower to stay alive in there, you may need additional planes to protect its cover. Close air support often required fast air-to-ground strikes against stubborn opposition as it would develop ahead of it. Dive bombing would be undertaken if needed. Well, that's the way it was. Thank you, Colonel. That's the way it was. Air superiority, reconnaissance, interdiction, close air support. Tactical air had a variety of jobs to do and many types of aircraft to do the job. In both major and minor operations, the men who flew and maintained all those memorable machines made history. Those men, the pilots, the navigators, the ground crews, the command, through long experience in the planning and performing of countless missions, learned what those aircraft could do and inevitably, the hard-won knowledge brought with it a realization of what those aircraft could not do. Man, I could have used a lot more airspeed on that run. We can't strike that far from here, not with any real hope of getting back. Here we are, stocked in, but it won't hold back their ground troops. That's how it was. The aircraft were the best that the state of the art could provide. But even so, the men who used them wished they had something better. Today, the tasks assigned to tactical air are the same as in those days. To maintain air superiority, perform reconnaissance and interdiction, deliver close air support. Today, potential opposition is stiffer than ever before. Today, tactical air requires aircraft that incorporate drastic advances in the state of the art that offer vastly improved performance and flexibility. Today, such aircraft exist. The F-105 Thunder Chief fighter bomber is such an aircraft. Pilots, operations experts, and logistics experts, all from tactical air, 
worked closely with designers from Republic Aviation Corporation on the development of this Mach 2 weapon system. The result of the more than 5 million engineering man hours is an important addition to the United States defense arsenal, tailor-made to the requirements of Air Force and Army tactical missions. With the F-105, Tactical Air Worldwide has the means of performing all of its combat missions with one aircraft. With the F-105, Tactical Air has a new look. Let's see just how new. Let's ask a man who's right in there with us. Captain, would you tell us about it? You bet I will. You want the whole bit? Air superiority, reconnaissance, interdiction, and close air support? That's right. Well, in the air-to-air -air part of the first category, the F-105 carry faster guns. The new type Gatling gun puts out 20-millimeter shells at the rate of 6,000 a minute. And this with the aircraft traveling at Mach 2 or better. Also, air-to-air, -air, we can take along a pair of sidewinders under each wing. They're well-named. It's like having a team of trained rattlesnakes in your saddlebag. <laughs> now, in the air-to-ground phase of air superiority, there are a great many plus values. The F-105 is designed to carry conventional bombs, of course. 26 500-pounders is an impressive payload for a tactical fighter. knockout punch, and this is outside of our ordinary duties, but you never can tell. Nuclear or thermonuclear weapons can be carried. The F-105 can fly non-stop, a distance we don't advertise. If even that isn't far enough, new techniques of air-to-air -air refueling give the system a truly global range of operation. We figure we can strike anywhere in the world from the United States bases in a matter of hours. Well, it looks as if we can be optimistic about air superiority. What about reconnaissance with the F-105? Okay, the F-105 is designed to handle this kind of work, armed and ready for anything. Its high performance and weapon versatility make it very effective against targets of opportunity. The scope of general reconnaissance is greatly widened by the F-105's ability to achieve deep penetration in any kind of weather. The radar screen discloses activities and installations the enemy thinks we can't locate through the overcast. Now, before getting into interdiction, there are some features that make any kind of operation easier. The F-105's mission capability will be better understood if the automatic systems are mentioned first. Okay, go ahead. There's an elaborate electronic installation, a number of integrated systems that provide automatic navigation, automatic flight control, and automatic fire control. The F-105 can find its way through any kind of weather, day or night, and it can be largely a hands-off operation for the pilot, even when coming in on a target right down on the deck where enemy radar has less chance of picking up an image. On arrival at the target area, the automatic fire control system, called Thunderstick, can be put to work. Using advanced computer and radar techniques, this equipment leads the pilot to the target and automatically releases the score. Getting out of there in a hurry is automatic, too. Very good. Now, remembering that we have all those electronic frames aboard and working for us, how about interdiction? Well, on interdiction missions against assigned targets, the F-105 can deliver a variety of munitions, whatever the situation requires. And if the situation changes, its rapid turnaround rate is one of its most attractive features. Refueling, rearming, and making ready for another mission can be accomplished in a matter of minutes. Now, 
when it comes to close air support, you'll find that the F-105 can employ many of its capabilities to good advantage. In a column cover mission, for example, it can loiter nearby until needed. When it's notified of trouble, it streaks to its assigned destination to neutralize enemy ground forces that impede or threaten the column's progress. If rockets are required, the F-105 can deliver them. A few at a time or a salvo of 76. F-105 never leaves home without its lethal 20-millimeter Gatling gun. And the F-105 routinely handles one of the most formidable of airborne weapons, the giant killer, the deadly bullpup missile. Against stubborn resistance in proximity to friendly forces, incendiary bombs can be delivered with deadly accuracy. That gives you the picture. Four basic missions and some plus values. Thank you, Captain. Well, there you have it. That's how it is today. One aircraft capable of performing all the traditional combat missions of tactical air, capable of rendering assistance to ground forces in new ways and with added speed and firepower. The Air Force has documented its experience with single-purpose tactical vehicles as to cost, function, maintenance, training, and problems of logistic support. As a result, the Air Force supports the principle that on a cost-effective basis, a versatile, multi-purpose aircraft is to be preferred. The Thunder Chief was created to be a fast, deadly, wide-ranging, and versatile weapon system. It replaces a whole family of previous aircraft, giving tactical air a new look that will last well into tomorrow. Truly, the F-105 has proved itself to be master of all trades.